Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. Uh, we're going to keep working through some time value of money here. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that we do a fair bit of in Chapter 5, and uh, sorry, for uh, core curriculum for those proceeding to their uh, QAFP or CFP exams. And this particular question, a little bit of a different thing here. Maybe this is a little bit of a flyer, uh, but I guess I built this because of a bugbear that I have around uh, something that happens with uh, term life insurance in particular. Um, you don't find this uh, with universal life insurance and then with uh, whole life policies, this varies by insurer, but this is pretty common. What I'm gonna show here is pretty common with uh, term insurance. So this is exactly what happens with term insurance. These are real premiums. This is based on a real quote, although the quote's a little bit outdated now, but anybody who has access to quoting software, you can pull up and do the exact same thing that I'm about to do here. So what we're often told is that insurers have a, say an 8% modal factor. That's a pretty common thing to hear. And I'll show you where that comes from. So what's happening here is we have an annual premium of $315 and uh, 96 cents, okay? So we're gonna take that and we're going to uh, divide that into a monthly figure, okay? So we'll take that divided by 12, at uh, 315.96. If you were paying that premium on a pure monthly basis with no substitute for anything by the insurer, we would take 315.96 uh, divided by 12, and we're gonna get $26.33, uh, which you can plainly see is not the monthly premium here, assuming this is a valid quote. Check for yourself, but uh, 2633 a month if we just divide it by 12. So what we're told here is really that the insurer, and there's some validity to this, I don't deny this, that the insurer uh, needs to uh, make up that uh, premium because essentially they're doing a little more administrative work here. And they're also without some of that premium for 11 months. Uh, life insurance is really a multi-year product. so. The idea here is the insurer needs to uh, make some of that up. So let's see what's going on here. Well, if I take uh, 2633 uh, times 12 now, oh, sorry, I apologize. I'm going to take uh, 2831 times 12. I already know what 2633 uh, times 12 is. I'm going to take 2831 times 12. And I'm going to get uh, 339.72. We knew it was going to be larger. It could only be the way. So there's a 339.72 here. So if we take the, and it doesn't really matter. We could have done this with the uh, monthly amounts too. If we take that 339.72, uh, divided by uh, 315 96, just like so, uh, we're going to get 1.075. We can do it. I've got this calculator over here. I might as well use it. So we take 339.72 uh, divided by 315.96 and we'll get 1.0752. Let's just round that off to 1.075. It works just fine for our purposes. Or 7.5% uh, is the amount of increase here. Or we might say a 7.5% modal factor. That is, you're switching from the annual mode of premiums to the monthly mode of premiums and the insurer is going to charge you uh, seven and a half percent for that. So fine, um, but is this the same as borrowing money at seven and a half percent? So really, if we treat that as a loan at seven and a half percent, we could draw a line like
like everybody is well used to here. I could take the $315.96. Effectively, what I'm doing here is I'm getting $315.96. I'm borrowing that and repaying it over a period of 12 months. And I'm repaying it at a rate of $28.31 per month. I hope that's fair. And what I want to know here is what is my, I'll solve for an annual rate. You could do monthly, but uh, let's do our rate on an annually compounding basis, or what we might call our effective rate. So we'll write out our variables here. Oh, sorry, I have done this before. And I will actually solve it on begin. This is actually a, a good example of where begin is appropriate. Although I'll show you that it's not going to make that much difference, but this is true. Uh, you pay premiums at the beginning of the period. Insurance premiums are uh, due at the beginning of the period. You don't get to wait till the end of the month, at least with the life insurance premiums to pay those, you pay in advance in order to uh, bind and retain coverage. So we're going to uh, then calculate that out, PY of uh, 12, CY of one times PY, we're going to have one year here. Uh, IY is we're going to compute present value, uh, we're borrowing $315.96. And then our payment, we're paying back $28.31 per month and our future value is going to be zero. Uh, now, I'll, I'll actually solve this on end afterwards too, just to show you here, because I think some people are gonna be a little surprised at the result. So we're gonna do uh, clear all again, make sure everything's all clear in the calculator. And we're gonna bring up our PY, so PY is 12. And then CY is one, enter, okay, good to go. Uh, we're gonna get out of here, we'll do one into the times PY spot. So N is 12, perfect. Uh, PY of $315.96. And that's sorry, present value. And then 28.31 negative, that's uh, going away from us to the insurer. So 28.31 zero as our future value, and we can uh, compute our uh, Y. And I should point out, actually, I, I said all term insurance has a modal factor. That's not necessarily true. I actually, myself, I actually own one uh, converted policy uh, that has no modal factor on it. I'm not sure if those policies do now, but it was a, a group insurance conversion into uh, individual term. It has no modal factor. All right, anyways, IY is 14.5%. Uh, so effectively what we've done here is we have borrowed uh, that money at a rate of 14.5%, not quite credit card rates, but uh, pretty steep. So in fact, you would be, um, assuming I've done my math correctly, and I'd love to hear if I haven't, uh, you would be better off to borrow money at really any rate less than 14.5% uh, and pay annual premiums or just use your cash flow would be best of all to pay um, annual premiums. I, I think uh, many people are probably not terribly aware of this. And the fact that insurers sort of present this as a 7.5% modal factor, I don't think it's deliberately um, misleading. It's really just that it's not an interest rate. So uh, next time you see a term insurance policy, just look at the two premiums. You can do exactly the math that I did here and you can figure out whether or not it's worthwhile to do this. Now, if this is the only way to do it, you know, realistically, Ken in this case is probably not going to go and borrow uh, $315.96 to pay premiums. That's uh, maybe not a financially sound decision. So, uh, that's okay, but you're paying 14.5% then for that convenience. Um, and I would assume that if there's any way for Ken to get the 315.96 himself out of his own pocket uh, or out of his own cash flow, he'd be better to do so. 
So I hope that that's uh, useful. I hope it's interesting. I always find this one a little bit of a uh, mind bender just because it's so different from what people have been taught. And enjoy your continued studies. Thanks.